Verse 27, so the men marvel, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Here's my notes. In the middle of the storm, the Lord spoke peace over the situation, over the circumstance, and immediately the winds and the waves obeyed him. Who is this that the winds and the sea obey him? Look at the power he has. Look at the authority he has. And they obey him. And look, it's calm now. It's calm. We, we, we were just in a storm. We were fearful for our lives. And then we call on the name of Jesus for salvation. And he arises and he rebukes us for not praying to the Father. And for having so much fear and not trusting in him when he is in the boat. That's who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And that's how he saves and that's how he deals with us when we are in a storm. In 2014, we are in a storm from hell, man. We have things coming up that this world is trying to hurt us with, with our elections. We have things that they are doing, the laws that they are passing. They are passing every law that is evil. Evil they are passing. And they are doing that to harm us and to harm God and to harm the people and to hurt the people because the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's coming to kill your children. He's coming to destroy your family. And that's what he does. And he's coming to bring division against the people so that we have strife. Now we're going to go over the winds and the waves in Mark 4, 35-31. On the same day in the evening had come, he said to them, Let's cross over to the other side. No, we must proclaim the gospel, minister the word, bringing salvation, healing, deliverance, and baptism with the Holy Spirit to God's children. So let's go to the other side and minister the word because this is why I came. I came to proclaim the gospel. I came to bring deliverance to those who are in bondage. I came to bring sight to the blind. I came to raise the dead from the dead. I am the Lord Jesus Christ who does the will of my Father in heaven, Elohim. He does the works. He sent me down here to minister the gospel to you. That's what Jesus Christ came for, and that's what Jesus Christ does, and that's who he is, and we are his children, if we believe in him. 36. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. So Jesus got in the boat with the twelve. And there was also other little boats that were hanging around with them, going with them as well. So here's my notes. Other boats were with him. Even with him, he allows the storm in their life, the trials, the tribulations, the detours. Because these boats, do you think that they did, weren't in the storm? Do you think they had calm waters and it was just the one boat? No, it was all. All the sea, because he told the sea to come and be still and know that he is God. Amen, Lord, the power and the authority that you have, Lord. Verse 37, and a great wisdom arose and the waves beat into the boat. So water's coming over the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. So this dude is just chilling. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Here's my notes. Who are you going to call when you're in the middle of your storm? I'm going to call the one who tells the storm shalom, peace, and the winds and the sea obey. All chaos and anarchy must leave in the name of Jesus Christ. That's who I call on. That's who I believe in. And that's who fishers of men we are ministering to put your faith. Who are you going to call on in your storm, man? Hell or high water, we call on the Lord Jesus Christ, man. When things are going smooth, we call and we thank the Lord Jesus Christ. When things are going bad, we bring it to him and we still thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you are not alone in the storm. You are, he is with you in the storm. He is even leading and guiding you in the storm. And it will be hell. But... The sun will shine, and it will rise again, 
and we will be there and we will be blessed and we will look back at what he has done how he saved me from this storm in the middle of the storm how I can trust him how he has never let me down he will never leave me or forsake me the word says and I can vouch for that because I've seen him it, does he always answer everything the way I want? No, because he knows what's best for me. Sometimes I'm asking for things that maybe I think I'm asking it for the right, but it may harm me in the future. And he can see all that and he knows all that. And he loves you and he's willing to deny your prayer or answer your prayer, but not to the terms that you are thinking of. Put your trust and hope in him and believe in him and know that he will lead you and guide you. Verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Shalom! And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You know, who can tell the wind and the sea to obey? We go fishing, and the water's calm. We call it calm, but it's a little choppy. We call it a little choppy because the wind's blowing, and it's not too bad, so you can still fish, you know? And that's just with the wind a little choppy. Just imagine a storm in the middle of the sea. Water, it says it was coming over the boat and it's a storm and there's probably lightning and thunder and wind and waves and rushing wind and everything. And he's just asleep in the boat in peace. And they wake up all frantic and he says, where's your faith? Why is your faith not in the Father? Why are you not praying? Why are you waking me up fearful? And then he saves them and shows him who the Father is. Man. So here's my notes. Here is a clear demonstration of the authority of his word. The authority that he has. He can clearly tell the winds and the waves, Shalom, peace, and they obey him. They calm down. He controls the winds and the waves with his Authority, the power that he has, even the winds and wave obey him. Verse 40, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Where is your faith? Why are you so fearful? So he tells them, where's your faith? You cannot operate the will of the Father without faith. You cannot please the Father without faith. You can move a mountain a stronghold with a mustard seed faith by exercising your faith in him and only him trusting him believing in him calling on him asking him to do the will of the father in your life verse 41 and they feared exceedingly and said to one another who can this be that even the winds and the waves obey him we're going to reference thomas Thomas says it best, I believe. My Lord, my God, Jesus Christ. That's who Jesus is. That's who we believe he is. And that's what he does. You have been in a storm and you have been doing this by yourself. And you are getting smashed against the rocks. You're getting thrown to and fro in the boat. The boat is overfilling. It is going down. There's a pail, there's a bucket there that you are been expelling the water with. But guess what? Water keeps coming in twice as fast and you are going to drown. It's just a matter of time. You have to seek the Lord. Get on your hands and knees and repent for the things you have done. Ask the Lord to come into your life. Ask the Lord to start working with your wife and your husband. Ask you, the Lord to come in and work with your children. Bring salvation to the household of your last name. Say your last name. Bring salvation to the household of... Bring salvation. We'll do it again. Bring, I'm going to use my name. Bring salvation to the household of the Reinas. Bring salvation to the household of your name. And I stand with you. We don't do this for fun. And it may sound silly to you. What do you mean you're going to stand with me? Just like I'm asking you to stand with me for the Lord to bring salvation to my house. I stand with you that the Lord brings salvation to your house and to your children and to your family. That is what we do here. If we're not standing together, 
If we're not coming together, petitioning God, putting our faith and trusting in Him, fishers of men has no business ministering the word to you. Because if we're not producing the word, and if we're not explaining this word and showing you how to activate this word and how to walk in this word, we are failing at our job. Because we do this because we love Him, and we do this because it invites Jesus Christ into the situation and He does the works. Because by faith, we are believing that He will hear our petition and that He will act upon it accordingly to His will. Not my will, but His will. So, Jesus Christ, I want to wish you a happy Father's Day. I know you're not the Father, Jesus Christ. But you, the Bible in Isaiah 9, 6 says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, Mighty God. There it is right there, Lord. So I wish you a happy Father's Day. I look at you like you're my father. I'm sorry. But Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh, you are the Father. And you're my Father. And you're the Father of all. And all. We wish you a happy Father's Day, Elohim, and we thank you. And Holy Spirit, we, we thank you for the work that you do. Now, I just want to tell y'all something personal about me. Uh, my Father's Day, his name is Robert J. Reyna. I just would like, Father in Heaven, if you could just hug my father for me. And um, let my father know. My father had a will for me. He was in his last days, and he would look at me and tell me, Son, I, can't, I want to go home. I'm tired. And I would get sad and he would say, but I can't go home, son, because you haven't given your heart to God. And I can't go home knowing, son, that you haven't given your heart to God. I can't go home. So that was my dad's legacy was for me to give his heart to God. And my dad died. He was born on April the 1st and he went out on July 4th. So I like to say he came in laughing and went out with a bang, you know. And the sad thing is a month later... After my dad passed away, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. So, never got to read the Word or speak the Word with my father like I would have loved to. Now, I watched my father growing up. My uncles would come over and they would sit there at the table. There's about four or five of them with their wives. and They would just discuss the Bible and I loved that. And I wish I had that. But my dad... So, Father, if you would just show my dad that uh, I love him and that I'm doing the best I can to minister the Word of God to his children. just want to honor my dad. So, thank you for allowing fishers of men to come minister the Word to you. And this is a joyous day. And I just want to wish fathers happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And I love my father in heaven, Robert J. Reyna. But my first father is... Yahweh and he is first and he is most important and I wish him happy father's day. I'm not putting my father above him by any means. I just love my dad as well. So thank you and we see you next week guys. Amen and amen to that.